We have a massive matchup between the Georgia Bulldogs heading to Neyland Stadium. Some would call it the first real road test. But as we've talked about all week, Georgia's just been checking the boxes. They haven't played someone with a real offense. They do that against Ole Miss. Obviously, we saw it happen. They did that against Missouri. Obviously, we saw what happened. They had, like It feels like they're checking a box every single week. And we have DJ Shockley and Sadu from Georgia Bulldogs. Now they are going to join us and tell us, break down this matchup. Chase and Alex, what's up, man? I appreciate you guys having me on your show. I appreciate it. As you can see behind me, Bulldogs now, which comes on on Saturday mornings at 8 o'clock. You can tune in and watch that any single time you want. Or on Fox Local as well. But guess what? That's I right. got my man Suda Upadea with me, and we are going to talk about the big matchup on Saturday between the Tennessee Volunteers and our Georgia Bulldogs. And, of course, I mean, LSU probably, I mean, yeah. guys lost a couple of games. Rough. It's, it's rough on those They might guys. have a Heisman winner at least. Yeah, they might. But, hey, we're talking about winners right now, and this the winners are the dogs. You remember Big. the Rebels? I went to school at Ole Miss. Also yeah. beat LSU this year. Ooh, so that's a good I'm not right trying there. to. I'm not Sorry trying to start that, anything. I'm just saying. You Sorry, know, fellas. Just to we put got, it on the record. Got to get those digs in when we can. You know, purple <laughs> and gold. We got to keep that. But serious enough, man. Talk about the dogs. Big game versus Tennessee. Monumental matchup. Obviously, yeah. everybody thought coming into this game right. that it could mean a lot more than it did. Tennessee's lost three games, but guess what? This still is a huge ball game in Neyland Stadium. Joe Milton, a guy who everybody is excited to watch, has played pretty good this year. 16 touchdowns, five interceptions. Georgia has to do a good job of one, I think, stopping the run this ball game. Absolutely. What I mean, do you think? They, they've got some dogs on the in, in the backfield. No, you know, yeah. I'm not trying to call them dogs, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Jalen Wright, you got Dylan Sampson, then Jabari Small as well. Really a For three-headed sure. attack there. For sure. They're doing a great job running the football. A lot of injuries on offense, right? Yeah. They lost Dante Thornton at receiver, Brew McCoy. Milton's season hasn't been, I guess, what we thought it would be. A lot of people were trying to compare him to Anthony Richardson yeah. a year ago. Hasn't had that season. But, still he's, but he, he's still been good, though. He's, yeah, got, he's got a huge arm. He's got man. over 300 yards rushing. He's got a huge arm. He's been doing that. Tennessee is tough in Neyland Stadium. They hasn't lost there since 2021 when they played the Dogs in that game. So this will be a great matchup, I think, between the Dogs offense versus that Tennessee defense. Carson Beck has played really good football. They got Ladd back. Brock came back last yeah. week. Now that's a, a really tough matchup. And then we saw my man Kendall Milton go for over 100 yards last week, career high going for over 100 yards. This is going to be a fun matchup to watch in this ball game. If Georgia can control the line of scrimmage, if they can play good on third down, this can be a game that they can dominate, and it starts up front with the offensive line. They've done that pretty much this year, averaging over 180 yards a game. So look for Georgia to be able to run the football, but also play action pass and hit some deep shots. Yeah, and look, you've played in Neyland Stadium. We know just how engulfing of an environment it is. Yeah. I'll give you all this. Tiger Stadium, probably the, crazy, the craziest crazy. environment I've been in. Neyland's right up there. You told me, though, you thought Tiger Stadium was worse as, as a quarterback right. to play right. in, right? Chase, Alex, I give you guys a little credit. <laughs> It is a tough Death place Valley, to play. Man. I remember first time going there. They rocking our bus, little kids doing some unforeseen things to us as we get off the bus. But hey, <laughs> it's a crazy environment. Neyland Stadium will be the same, but I love going into the SEC opponents' places like a Neyland Stadium, like Tiger Stadium, and playing and playing some good football. So yeah. it's going to be fun watch this weekend. Absolutely. And look, I mean, the dogs, they win this. They've already clinched a spot in the SEC championship game. It's just further, you know, furthers yeah. that record. What would it be? The 28th straight win for the dogs yeah. going into the rivalry game against Georgia Tech. And you know what? LSU, I mean, they don't know what it's like this year, right, yeah. to, to play in the SEC championship. You, got, you guys saw it last year, which is cool. You guys saw it last year, which is cool. And, you know. I can't did. say anything. Ole Miss has never been. But we also so. did the old pick him up, you know, with Jalen Daniels and hold him up. But it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to watch, man. But hopefully we get a chance to meet up with LSU next year. One day much better, hopefully, right? Absolutely, yeah. I'd love to see it. I don't. I like listen. I like th th there's some things that are unnecessary there. Like why why why, why do we have to throw in the cheap shots at LSU? Especially we get an Ole Miss guy, we get a Georgia guy, and and there's 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 a lot of years where you know th there's never been a word said out of Ole Miss mouth. But like listen. <laughs> Like, I, I'm a big proponent of talking trash when you can back it up. And this year, like, LSU clearly can't back it up. And, and it is what it is. They let us go. In. But let's focus on this game, right? On, uh, like, this is uh, everything that Tennessee fans have been begging for. Like, they get them coming in there. And there's going to be things where, like, yeah, sure, Tennessee thought they were going to be better, right? Like, they, 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 they thought in their heads, like, Joe Milton could have been the guy, blah, blah. But he's not, like – I don't, I don't think Heupel's a bad coach. Like, I mean, like, you're seven and three. Like, at the end of the day, like, if somehow you win this game, like, you win nine games at Tennessee, like, let's stop acting like Tennessee is the program that they used to be. Like, that, 
Like you come off a big season, you win nine games, you win eight games, whatever. Like it's not the worst season ever, but this is their Super Bowl. Like this is everything they've been preparing for since last year after what happened when they were number one and everything. Is there any way, like, like I, DJ broke it down. Is there any way that they could, they could somehow make this close? I know we've talked about it a little bit. You, you've kind of said, oh, the spread doesn't make any sense somehow. But like, give me the details. Like, like, what is the scenario that they somehow <laughs> make it close? I want to preface that answer with Sudu, DJ, my guys. We're just taking shots at LSU for no reason. Hang on, we might not. It's not a might, Jane Daniels Heisman. He is the Heisman front runner today. There's no doubt about that. LSU season as a whole has been disappointing, but we can hang our hat on the Heisman. Obviously, you'd rather be in Atlanta playing than a Heisman, but back to the game of the week, obviously. Neyland's going to be rocking, and there are a couple of things to me that Tennessee has to do if they want a chance in this game. Obviously, when you face a Kirby Smart coached football team, mistakes. You can't make mistakes and mistakes, meaning turnovers. You cannot turn the ball over against a Kirby. You, in fact, you need to force turnovers. You need to force Carson Beck into uncomfortable situations. Now, I want to also follow that up with, I'm an LSU guy, but I see virtually no way that Tennessee wins this game uh, unless that Georgia just absolutely implodes. Carson Beck, Bobo, the Georgia offense is absolutely hitting their stride at the right time. Not only is Bobo or Bobo and Beck figuring it out one another, they're also getting healthy. They're getting healthy along the offensive line. Lad McConkey's back. Brock Bowers is back. This might be the best receiving core I've ever seen the Bulldogs have. This is an this is um, I, I don't want to give any Tennessee fans hope because of the spread. You have no hope. This is a runaway train and you better get off the rails because they're coming. This Kirby Smart football team has their has their sights set on higher goals than Naylan. I do want to say that place is going to be absolutely rocking. We'll see how Beck we saw how he Here, took I the got... Auburn, the Auburn the Auburn crowd played a played a factor in that game a few uh, a month ago or so. Let's see what Tennessee fans can do for them. Yeah, I mean, there's something there, there's something about you know like Georgia fans like to say you know it, it's it's called who's that coming down the track and it, yeah. and it's that mean machine in red and black and for a lot yeah. of years that meant nothing right that meant yep. you know oh that's cute that's a nice little saying but there is something to that now where you have to understand like that is the mean machine in red and black like they are beasts they are dogs and they are coming to kill you and like that is what they are going to do in Tennessee like there is no doubt in my mind and we've talked about this game earlier in the week and it's about Kirby Smart has had so much success in Tennessee and and there is something to be said when when, you, when you're talking about the biggest rivals of Georgia right now like seriously right now like when I was growing up it was obviously Florida right and like you could say Georgia Tech but when you're talking about right now, like who do they want to kill the most right now? I, I I don't think there's anyone up there with Tennessee. And I know Tennessee feels the same way. Unfortunately, they just don't have the <laughs> talent that they did last year. Like, I mean, we're talking about, I mean, it is going to take a borderline miracle. I mean, it really is. Like it, it is going to take, you know, you want to know, I, you know, I prefaced the question after DJ got off there. I, I told you like, what would it take for Tennessee to win? It would take the first half of Bama, and I'm not saying – I mean, Tennessee played really well in the first half of Bama, but it, but Bama was turning the ball over left and right. Like, it, was, it, it has to take two halves of Georgia just going fumble, fumble, everything, get the crowd into it, get it – I mean, that that I mean that's seriously what it's going to have to take because, I mean, this Georgia team, and, like, you know, we've questioned them all year, but, like, they're, they're legit, man. And you know what's great? Legit. You know what's crazy is if Georgia just does the bare minimum of what they're capable of, they win this game running away. Two scores, maybe even put the backups in. It's going to take self-inflicted mistakes for Georgia to make this a football game. Tennessee is going to have to capitalize on every minute mistake that Georgia makes. And frankly, when have you seen a Kirby Smart coached football team in the last couple of years make that many mistakes? You don't. You don't. This team is going to be geared up and ready to go. They know what's at stake. And I talked about this before uh, the Florida game, that Kirby Smart knows better than anybody 
in this in this program what this game means to Georgia Bull, what to the Georgia Bulldogs and to the Tennessee Volunteers. He knows. He played in this game and now he's coached in this game seven different times. He absolutely knows what's at stake and he's going to have those boys riled up. I mean, this is unfortunately for Tennessee fans, I think this is going to be an absolute bloodbath because there's no part, there's no facet of the foot of football that Tennessee is better than Georgia. I'm talking players. I'm talking scheme, execution. The only thing Tennessee has going for them is they're at home in one of the most raucous environments in the country. I'm talking in the country. They talked, a DJ talked about how playing in Tiger Stadium, Nealon is right up there with Tiger Stadium. It's absolutely electric. If Tennessee has any chance, the crowd is going to have to play a factor in this. Yeah, I mean the crowd. That 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 is something I want to focus on. I mean, they they like Tiger Stadium. We talk about all these SEC ch- stadiums and everything. Like uh, like if, if you've got a good SEC stadium for a big game, like it, it's gonna be there. But like this this is this game in Neyland is going to have a Alabama feel to it. Last year, remember when they beat Alabama? Oh, like yeah. I feel like there's just like they there, there, there's a something when you lose to a team so much and so much and the other team's having so much success and it's your rival. I mean, think about LSU and Alabama. Like we did that for what ten years, eight years, <laughs> and when we finally beat them with Joe Burrow, like we finally got a blessing from God, and and his name was Joe Burrow. Like it, it was, it, it's a different feeling. There's a different type of hatred. It's a different type of crowd that shows up to that game. And I think that's what you're going to see on Saturday night or Saturday afternoon, a, a different, it's going to be a hatred kind of crowd, which is the best type of crowds in the SEC coming up after the break. Hey, they stole the MLB all-star game from us, but guess what? They're bringing it back apparently in 2025. Hopefully it doesn't leave again. 